we're gonna go over three things you need to be aware of when purchasing a pre-sale. And we're gonna start right now. Let's do this. How's it going? My name is John and I am a mortgage broker located in Vancouver and welcome to another video. If this is the first time here and you want to learn ways to be approved for a mortgage, home buying tips and other mortgage related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking on the notification bell so you won't miss anything. I am here today with Shannon Dupree, Realtor at Keller Williams Elite Realty. How's it going? Hi everyone. It's going good. Thank you so much for having me. So for this video, uh, we're talking about pre-sales and I thought of you because you're an expert in pre-sales. Perhaps you can share with us um, what led you to become an expert and specialist in pre-sales. Sure, so I started out by helping out a couple of my friends purchase their first home and for many first-time home buyers an option to purchase a pre-sale is the way to go. So I kind of started out doing that and then I became very interested in that industry and so then I decided to specialize in pre-sales. Perfect. Yeah. So I know lots of first-time home buyers, they are looking into pre-sale condos as an option but um, there are some things to avoid when it comes to buying pre-sales. What would you say would be the top three things? The top three things to avoid um, well, there's certain floor plans to avoid. Uh, there's certain units in the building to avoid. Um, and then the third one would avoid going to a presentation center without a realtor. Let's go over floor plans. Yeah. So that's quite the, 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 the interesting part about pre-sales is because when you go into a place, you see the presentation center, but you actually yeah. don't see the unit and you have to go by looking at the, the floor plan. Yeah. So what are some floor plans to avoid? So some floor plans to avoid would be floor plans that are not functional. So what I mean by not functional floor plans is sometimes you look at a new condo development and the architecture is very unique on the outside, very appealing to people. Um, but you look at the condos on the inside and the floor plan is not functional. Right. So that may be there's weird angles in the unit where um, it makes you unable to like place a couch against a wall in the living room. So instead the couch will have to go in the middle of the room, obstructing the flow in the condo. So definitely avoid non-functional floor plans. You want to choose one that is easy to flow through the condo and very functional for you and your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I understand that there are some units in the location inside the building that people should avoid as well. So what are those types of units? So that's a great question. Those type of units are going to vary for each development. Each development is going to have units that are the least desirable ones. Mm -hmm. So with that said, typical ones that are least desirable are units directly beside the elevator, uh, units facing a busy road, um, and then also the units with the least desirable floor plan. Yeah. And um, when we're looking into pre-sales, of course, you need to really visualize where, if they can see themselves living in it. Yes. But um, also, they have to think about resale value as yeah. well. So what would be more desirable units or location of, of, the, of the property? Yeah, so the most desirable units are probably going to be the top floor units, corner units. And then in terms of floor plan, you really want to choose a floor plan that fits your lifestyle and your needs. But you also have to keep in mind that in the future, you want to pick a floor plan that's most desirable for potential future buyers as well. So you're going to go with a floor plan with an open concept where there's tons of space. You can fit a dining table. Uh, you want to choose a condo that has you know, storage space as well, closets, pantry that appeal to the future buyers. So Shannon, I know there are lots of people who go to presentation centers with a realtor, but couldn't they just go on their own? Is that, would that be a good idea? So that's a good question. I would avoid going to the presentation center on your own. I mean, you could go to the presentation with a realtor or you could go on your own. I think that both options are good, 
but many people do choose to go with the realtor and this is why is because when you go to a presentation center they are built to sell so when you walk in everything's going to be perfect everyone in the presentation center are going to be very friendly to you because they're built to sell but when you walk in with a realtor, the realtor is going to be able to point out everything important about the development that you should know in order for you to make a confident decision when purchasing a home. So that's the benefits of using a realtor. The second thing I would say to that is a realtor is an expert in that location. So they're gonna know everything that's going around the development. They're gonna know future developments in the area that might affect the future value of the home you're purchasing. So that's the second benefit as well. So Shannon, for those who are watching right now and they're looking to purchase a pre-sale condo, but they're not working with Realtor right now, how would they be able to contact you? How would they be able to contact me? Well, I have all social media platforms. I have Instagram, I have Facebook, and I have LinkedIn. So I do get a lot of people contacting me via those channels, if you're comfortable with that. But I also have my phone number and email, which I, gladly display on my business card and all my social media platforms. So if you're more comfortable reaching out via email or phone number, you know, just shoot me a call. I'm on my phone 24 seven, so I'm pretty easy to reach. Perfect. Yeah. And there you go. We just went over three things to avoid when purchasing a pre-sale condo. I'm John Lee, mortgage broker and CEO of Rise Mortgage. We're always achieving your approval.